In this video, I'm going to talk about weighted averages. Now, before you watch all the rest of this video, you need to watch the wholesale and retail price video that I made earlier, because otherwise, you're just going to be lost in translation. And let me tell you something, that's the last thing you want to be when watching something like this. All right? So, I'm going to begin this, first of all, by saying hello to Rhonda, and thank you very much for the board. Okay? And uh, I'll be using this quite frequently in future videos, so stay tuned. In the meantime, let's talk about this. We have two toys, Toy A and Toy B. What's Toy A in this particular instance? Well, let's say you are a toy store and you are trying to sell toys. All right? And this can apply to Toys R Us. This can apply to LeapFrog. And let me tell you something. I love Toys R Us. I love LeapFrog. They're not endorsing any of this. I'm just telling you flat out, I love them both. And I hope they stay in business, both of them. Uh, I know that Walmart also sells toys, but I don't like them as much as I do Toys R Us and LeapFrog. Having said that, let's say you're another toy store. Okay? Um, anyway, you've got a thousand dolls, okay? And those thousand dolls cost ten dollars a piece to make. That is your wholesale price. That is what you paid to the factory to get those thousand dolls into your store, okay? And then you have Toy B. Now let's imagine that Toy B is trucks, okay? These are little toy trucks for boys. Now, Let's say that the price of steel to make those toy trucks was more expensive than the porcelain and plastic that it was that was used to make the dolls for your little girls. So, like I said, toy A, which is the dolls, they came out to be ten dollars a piece. Toy B, which was the trucks, came out to be twenty dollars a piece. Okay? So you bought a thousand trucks at a thousand dolls. And you paid those prices, the wholesale prices, remember these are wholesale prices, to acquire those items to put them in your store. Alright. Obviously, the trucks are worth more financially than the dolls. Alright. Now, let's say you sold five dolls and five trucks, which means you sold a total of ten items. Alright. But the thing is, you paid more for those trucks than you did for those dolls. So, you take the five dolls times ten dollars a piece, and now you have fifty dollars. And you take the five trucks, you take them times twenty dollars a piece, and now you have a hundred dollars. Well, a hundred plus fifty makes a hundred and fifty dollars. Alright? But you sold ten items. So, the average cost of each item, whether they be trucks or dolls, is going to be $15. And you say, how do we come up with that? $150 divided by 10, which is how many items you sold, regardless of whether they were dolls or trucks, makes $15. So, you had an average cost of $15 per item to sell those dolls and trucks. All right? And uh, that means that you've got to come up with a retail price to compensate for the $15 that you just lost in this average uh, by selling those dolls and trucks. And usually that retail price is going to be, well, for a doll like that, you probably raise the doll price to $15 because you paid 10 and probably you'd raise the uh, uh, truck price to $30 because you, were you bought them at 20 Okay. Remember, you got to compensate for your building, your air conditioning, restrooms that you provide to the public, security, um, and I could just go on and on and on. And remember, you have to pay your employees somehow. Telephone service, you name it. So, that's something you consider with your retail prices is your weighted average. And this weighted average, which is the $150 divided by 10, which is 15, that is your weighted average right there, your $15. That helps you determine what your retail prices are going to be. Alright, I will tell you more in a future video, so stay tuned.